Amen. Can we give the Lord one more hand clap of praise? Amen. We just thank God for your being here with us today. We thank you for your patience. We pray not to take too long, but just take as long as it takes. Amen. Amen. To impart into you the word of life. Amen. A word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people to deliver your word, not my opinion. Father God, your word gives us life as it did in the valley of dry bones. And Father God, we need life breathed upon us today. We need life breathed into our marriages, into our relationships with one another life into this church, the body of Christ. We ask, Lord, that you use me, Father God, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and do pray. Every heart say amen. 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 First, give an honor to God, the head of our lives. And amen to these ministers, Reverend Marshall, Sister Marshall, Reverend Thomas, Reverend Thompson. Amen less than a week to be soon, Mrs. Thompson, to my wife, to our officers, and, uh, their wives, to trustees, their wives, to this beautiful choir, to Sister Jesse, our drummers, and to all of you under the sound of my voice, so, delight, so delighted to have you with us. I want to invite you to turn in the Bible not too far to Genesis chapter 1. As we are still focusing on the family, and recognizing that the breakdown in the church begins at home. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of things in our homes that resemble the body of Christ. That's the way God designed it. So, amen, I want to deal another week, amen, in the home to a scripture I often reference, Genesis Chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. If you that say amen. amen. If you're not there, you must have a study Bible. <laughs> With a lot of pages. Before you get to Genesis. Amen. And it reads, then God said, New King James Version, let us make man in our image. All right. All right. According to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish and of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Yes, sir. Last verse. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Thank you for standing to honor the word of God. And if I could take a few moments of your time this, this afternoon, I want to deal with you from the topic, different on purpose. Different on purpose. So we celebrate coming to the end of Black History Month. I want to deal with diversity a little bit, but I want to stay in marriage and yet still draw parallels to the church. Different own purpose. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Did you know that out of the divorces that occur in America, 80% of them occur because of irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences is a very broad category when it comes to marriage and divorce because uh, it can include you just don't get along. Uh, it can include that we don't believe the same. It can conclu it, it, conclu it, it includes a broad range of topics. Right. Amen. Right. Irreconcilable differences. Right. And in the flesh, it's hard to love, let alone get along with people who are different than you. Right. And in marriage, you actually have to live with a person that is different from you. Hollywood has been known for years to marry and divorce or annul a marriage in a heartbeat. In 
fact, actress Zsa Gabor, those who remember her, was only married for less than 24 hours. The society we witness places little importance on marriage and the commitment to love one another in a marriage in spite of our differences. I don't want to be mistaken because I do believe that there are good reasons to divorce and there are biblically supported reasons to divorce. But for a child of God, irreconcilable differences should be something remedied by both parties seeking out. Both parties seeking out, obeying and honoring the word of God. It it takes two to tango. But if both are professing Christians, then both ought to be able to find the remedy in the word of God. We are all different for a purpose. The tough thing is trying to understand and appreciate and work through each other's differences. One thing that makes it so hard uh, is we live in a world that has oppressed and verbally abused those that are different from those uh, from them for thousands of years. History has taught people to hate what is different. History has. You can look this up when you get home, but it just amazed me to look up the Polynesian, the Melanesian, and the Micronesian islands. These are islands that are close together. This is where Hawaii is. You'll find that the Melanesian islands have people who look a little darker than me, and the Micronesian islands are a little lighter than me, and Hawaii has people who are brighter than that, but they separated themselves because of skin color. History, history, and history. You'll find one Adolf Hitler tried to do a, a, a racial cleansing. And he said that the, the, the perfect person was blonde, hair, and blue eyes. And how hypocritical he was because he wasn't even German. He was Austrian and he had brown hair and brown eyes. Even within the same race, you find in Rwanda that there was a genocide where millions were killed because of differences, because of religious differences, because of loyalty differences. But people have oppressed and slaughtered one another because there are differences between the other rather than try to work things out. Women have been oppressed because they are different. Native Americans have been oppressed because they are different. Since this is Black History Month, in America, the African American has been hated since he stepped foot on American soil, but we have returned hatred for hatred as well. Do you not know that the Civil Rights Movement would have been a success without the collective effort of a melting pot of races, of genders, of creeds, and religious denominations working together for one goal? We have to learn how to work with one another in spite of what is different about us. God never meant us for us to hate one another because we are different. Even when God told Israel to be separate, it wasn't because he had hatred for another race. To prove that, God used that one race to bring salvation to every race, gender and creed. When he poured Israel out and separated them and told them to be holy, he had a plan in mind to save those who were black, white, brown, blue, whatever, all alike. Say this, that being different is something to be proud of and celebrated because God made you who you are. We don't all need to be the same. We are different on purpose with a purpose. I want to look today briefly at husbands and wives and men and women today. But more importantly, I want to take a look at the church as a whole and look at how differences play a part in not only our homes, but in the kingdom of God. First thing that I want to look at in the text is the complexity of God. 
Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. And, 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 and there are some commentators that will tell you when God said, let us make man in our image, that he was talking to a heavenly host of angels. But well, that just simply could not be true. Because if he made God in his image and the angel's image, it would have cleared it up in verse 27 when God said God created man in his own image. Male and female, even though we are so different from one another, God created us in his own image. When he says, let us make man in our image, that let me know that God is far more complex than a human mind can even imagine. It lets me know that when God created male and female, that even though he made us different from one another, the things that are different about us all still came from one God. Ain't it amazing to know that you serve a God that, amen, that, that is so complex that you can't beat him down to one characteristic? Ain't it good to know that God can not only represent the one who is in this place, but God can represent you in that place, and God can represent you in that place, and God can identify with everybody that's different, because everything that is different about us all still comes from him. You say, well, give me Bible, give me Bible, give me Bible. I'll give you Bible. James 1 and 17 that says every good and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Even though we may be flawed, even though we're imperfect, even though there's some messed up things about us human beings, every good and perfect gift that is in you, thank you, that is in 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 you Every single good and perfect gift came from the complex God that we serve. That's a beautiful God. That is a beautiful God. He's more complex than we can understand. That's why some people leave the faith. That's why some people don't even join the faith. Because they don't understand it. But you'll never understand God. Because God is way more than one single description. He is a God of diversity because there are so many diverse things about the God that we serve. Second thing in this text that I want to look at, praise God, is the complexity of man. God created male and female in one image. He didn't say in his images. It didn't say in their image. But it said in his own image. But we're so different. That let me know that if God created male and female in his own image, and if God knew that we would be so diverse today, even twins are different from one another, that praise God, that, 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 that God knew That there had to be a piece of him in you and 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 a piece of him in you you, that we are complex. You got these secular books trying to help us figure us out what women want, what men want. You don't know what men want. You don't know what women want because all of us are different. There are some fundamental things that men may want. There are some fundamental things that women may want. But when you look at it closer, we are more complex than a simple book. God created us different from one another. Her sister Jackie McLean say that each of us are complete in God through Christ. But I'm going to tell you, and I agree with that, and I want to add on to that, but each of us, none of us, is a complete picture of God. In Christ, I'm complete in him. 
That means I am who he created me to be. I'm saved. I'm made whole. But I am still unique from the next person that's complete in him. And we are so complex for a reason. God made us different for a purpose. But we got to understand that we are going to be totally different. I'll never find someone that I can pin down just one description of. Because even us, if you think you got me figured out today, I'm going to change tomorrow. Why? Because I'm constantly becoming. I'm constantly being perfected. I'm going through new experiences. I'm reading new material. I'm receiving more revelation from the revelation in the word of God. Every day, if I'm trying to progress, I'm going to change from where I was yesterday. You wouldn't recognize me if you go back 25 years when I first started dating Valerie. I ain't that person anymore. You wouldn't recognize me May 17, 2003 when I got married to Valerie. I'm not that person anymore. So when she say you ain't the man I married, no I am not. But I pray that I'm better than the man that you married. Hallelujah. That's a purpose for us being different, which is my third and final point. That's a purpose for our differences. See, we we try to find somebody that's compatible in marriage. And somebody compatible to us is somebody that likes the same thing that I like. Somebody that talks the same way that I talk. Somebody that thinks the same way that I think. You don't need nobody that's compatible. Because if you look at your own children, the very things that I, they, they do that's just like you. I told Valerie, you can't stand it. You don't want nobody just like you. God created man and woman different for a reason. They're not supposed to be two ends of the same stick. Or two of the same ends on the same stick. They're supposed to work together. If they were not different, they couldn't have babies. If they were not different, Eve couldn't pick up where Adam slack. And Adam couldn't pick up where Eve slack. That's why we're different. Because God made us to be codependent on each other, but also codependent on him. Because what we can't get from each other, we got to find it in him. That's why you can't find your identity in a secular book. You got to find your identity in Christ. Because it's he who made you who you are. It's he that gives you purpose for being different. Whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you're black, whether you're white. He gave you a purpose. You say, well, give me scripture. First Corinthians 12, you know, we, I love it so much. It's the reason why it's, 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 it's a part of the theme. First Corinthians 12, I want to read these verses to you. 3 through 11 says, Wherefore I give you uh, to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts. That's the purpose. But the same Spirit. God is complex. Now there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. There are differences of operations but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For one to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith in the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit Reverend Thomas to another working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirit that does that discern men to, to, to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these work it that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will we're all different for a purpose. And, and you need somebody that's different from you. 
you need somebody that can offer a different perspective than you. See, see, in a marriage, the question is not so much whether we're compatible. The question is, how can I bring what's different about me to the table? And how can you bring what's different about you to the table where we can come to a complete puzzle? That's how it is in the church. God diversified the gifts that he gave out. Somebody has a different gift for a reason because everybody ain't supposed to do the same thing because there's more than one thing to be done. Somebody got to know where to go if I need a mechanic. Somebody got to know where to go if I need a good school. Somebody need to know how to fix a car. Somebody need to know how to give me some wisdom. Somebody need to know how to encourage you. Somebody need to know how to make you laugh. Because at some point in my life, I'm going to need every one of you. And I have to apologize because sometimes I get prideful and I don't like to ask for anything. And and I've always been that way. But I want you to know that I need you. I need you. At some point, I'm going to need your help. And I acknowledge that because I don't know it all and I can't do it all. Just because she's different from him, just because he's different from her doesn't mean that you don't need them. If you go on through that same chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 says the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I'm not of the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eyeball, who going to do the hearing? If the whole body were an ear, who going to do the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it have pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor again the head to the feet, I don't need you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, even the ones that you don't think you need, are just as necessary as the air that you breathe. I want to read this quote from Dr. David Fetters, and I, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Men and women are like a harmony and not unison. Unison is everybody singing alike, singing the same key. But everybody sounding the same But in harmony, everyone can sing their part together. Tenors, altos, and sopranos. Or if you were in the concert choir, Tuskegee, it would have been first and second tenor. First and second alto. Contralto. First and second soprano. Baritone and bass. But all of these parts work together. That's why God made us different. Because you and I need each other. I agree with the song that says, I need you to survive. So I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to ask you to pray for me. But I need you to survive. I ain't got it all. But God gave you something I need. And he gave me something you need. And we need to recognize that being different, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Mexican or Irish, we need each other because God created us that way. I need you. So, Reverend Jimmy, let me help you. She may be different. I'm helping myself too, I promise you. There might be some stuff about them that we just don't understand. And we say we can't stand it. We, don't, we can't stand it because we don't understand it. But amen, each of us have something to bring to the table. So again, the question is not how are we compatible in terms of how do we think alike? Or how do we act alike? Or how do we work alike? But the question is what can we bring to the table in our own unique manner through the grace of God to make this thing one complete picture? As 
I close. You're different for a purpose. The reason I know that, you might not want to hear this this morning, but I'm going to tell you. The reason I know we're different for a purpose is because Jesus died. Not just for the Jew, but he died and he rose. And before he left earth, he said, go ye therefore. And, and, and he told him at the beginning of Acts where to start. He says, start in Jerusalem. Then go to the outer skirts, the, the, the suburbs of Jerusalem. And, and that's Judea. And then he said, go to Samaria. Since you call them dogs, but they still have Jew. And then he said, once you start, once you leave there, go to the uttermost parts of the earth. He died for every one of us. For the black, for the white. For the Jew, for the, praise God, for the Roman, for, for, for the, the Russian. He died for the gay. He died for the straight. He died so everybody would come to know him. Die for all of us. die for all of them. We need each other. Stand with me, please. But if you haven't received him, you're not complete. If you want to be made complete, come to Jesus. Become part of this body that's so different. We, we, there's a lot of things that we have to tolerate with each other because we're so different. <laughs> well, I want to encourage us today to stop tolerating and start trying to understand it. You, you're who you are for a reason. I can't change it. It's not my job to change it. God made you who you are for a reason. From the youngest to the eldest, God made you who you are for a reason. We just need to figure it out. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, you're not a part of this family, not a part of this body. We want to invite you to come to Jesus. Let him complete you. You've been going through your whole life searching and searching. You've been trying and trying to get it right, but you can't do it on your own. You need Jesus. The doors of the church are open. Maybe here, the Holy Spirit just pricked your heart just to join with this church family. And I say and I say again that we want you a part of the body of Christ first. And if you want to join Union Springs, we can always use more soldiers. You may be here just because you need special prayer. And if you need special prayer, we're going to ask that, that everybody come to the altar. We'll, we'll, we'll just dismiss here at the altar.